there is darkness and darkness is not evil. And that through the exploration of our darkness, we can find our light. And by finding our light, we let our light shine. Notice that each star or each planet has its own course, its own fixed place, and it remains in that fixed place, shining its light. So the spiritual path of the left-hand path then is a path of the liberation of your own light. Hi, I'm Aaron Tomlinson. Welcome back to the channel where we talk about all kinds of different things, mental health, spirituality, uh, religion, deconstruction. Thank you for joining me for this video. In this video, I want to talk about something that may be new to some of you. If you're new to this channel, I want to talk about a spiritual path called the left-hand path. So this is something I I've noticed that's been coming up more and more in the New Day Global Facebook group, the private Facebook group that you can join if you want to by clicking on my bio, you'll find a link in there. And this is kind of a theme that's been coming up in a few of the posts, a few of the private messages that I've been getting, where people have deconstructed from their Christian faith, their Christian religion. And then maybe they've tried uh, various different other popular spiritual paths, and they're left wanting, or they find them to be too similar to what they left. And I'll share a story about that in a minute. So I wanted to make people aware of a legitimate, what I believe is a legitimate spiritual path in the Western mystical and occult tradition called the left-hand path. And I'll explain what that is in a minute. So for me, my experience, I was uh, pretty much led out of religion and faith through various different means converging but I didn't want to give up on my spirituality. I didn't want to give up on the ideas that had impacted my life in a positive way, but I didn't know how to approach that or where to go with that once I had seen the toxicity of the religious system that I was part of and was ready to leave. So like a lot of people, I ventured into the metaphysical realm. I ventured into the new age realm. I looked a little bit, just a little bit, at Eastern religions, Buddhism, <clears throat> yoga, Hinduism, stuff like that. And I explored this stuff and got involved in this stuff for a, a few years, I guess you could say. And I really began to notice that a lot of what was being taught in New Age circles, a lot of what was being taught in metaphysical and holistic circles was eerily familiar and similar to things that I had learned in Christianity or things that I had taught in Christianity. And I began to see a lot of the same patterns emerging that I did not want to embrace, that I did not want to walk into. And so for a lot of people, when that happens to them, they're oftentimes going through a rebuilding of themselves, a finding of their authentic self. I know I was going through that, doing a lot of experimentation, uh, and by experimentation, I just mean, you know, what do I like? What kind of food do I like? What kind of movies do I like? What kind of music do I like? It was like breaking out of this huge giant box, right? And there was a lot of spiritual freedom in there. I mean, I could look into astrology now. I could look into the tarot cards. I could look into energy work and things like Reiki and stuff like this. But uh, at the end of the day, uh, what was more important to me was rebuilding my authentic self, finding myself. Um, it was really true practicing. I mean, I was a hundred percent a believer in everything that I did and said and taught when I was uh, a pastor and when I was a Christian. And that caused me to lose myself. Jesus said in himself, right? If you want to be my disciple, you have to deny yourself, take up your cross and follow me. We have to put to death our flesh. We have to put ourselves last. We have to. And, and I became mystical. And the whole idea of mysticism is to seek a pathway of union with God. And in every mystical path that I explored, the key to finding union with God was a loss of the ego or a loss of the self. So I had these two energies sort of working at odds with each other. On the one hand, I was trying to find and express myself. And on the other hand, I was still trying to pursue mysticism, which was all about losing the ego still and losing the self. And then somewhere along the way, someone introduced me to what is known as the left-hand path. And like I said, I'll explain what that is in a minute. And when I found the left-hand path, I found a home. 
So I wanted to share this with you because I think this will resonate with some of you and help you find a way where you can do both. You can liberate and express and find your authentic self and have a legitimate spiritual path to follow at the same time. So the idea of the left-hand path comes from Sanskrit and Hindu traditions that are very ancient, that predate the Bible. <clears throat> and the idea is that there are two spiritual paths. There's a right-hand path and there is a left-hand path. And the left-hand path is the path of being awakened and going your own direction, not following the herd anymore, not following the crowd anymore, not seeking conformity anymore, but awakening to the fact that you've been part of the herd and now you no longer want to be part of the herd and you want to go a different direction. Now, while this is uh, commonly understood, at least from my understanding, in Eastern traditions, it was introduced to the West by a theosophy and by a lady named Madame Blavatsky, who was writing and uh, really a, a spiritual pioneer in the West um, in the late 19th, early 20th century. Now, for Madame Blavatsky, the right-hand path was the path of justice, the pathway to God, the pathway of mysticism, the pathway of high magic and righteousness. And in her writings, the left-hand path was the pathway of darkness, the pathway of evil, the pathway of black magic, and all kinds of just uh, nefarious kinds of things. And so that's how it was introduced into the Western tradition. So still today, a lot of people who are practitioners of the left-hand path or who have embraced the left-hand path believe that they have to, as part of that path, they have to embrace darkness, they have to embrace Satanism, they have to embrace uh, evil, evil intentions, use black magic, work with demons, and all that kind of stuff. So if you were to do a Google search on the left-hand path, if you were to read some books that have been written about the left-hand path, or if you did a search here on YouTube about the left-hand path, you're probably going to find a lot of really uh, dark stuff. And there was a lot of really dark and evil things that were done by these groups uh, <clears throat> that caused uh, a lot of pain and a lot of hurt and got into uh, what I would call authentic Satanism. The Anton LaVey version of Satanism was very theatrical, but basically it was, it was atheism. It was uh, the ideas of Ayn Rand and uh, Nietzsche put into a sort of theatrical satanic system. And so people say, well, Satanists don't believe in Satan. Well, that's true of the Anton LaVey streams, but there were a lot of other streams that had already begun practicing this left-hand path that Madame Blavatsky introduced. Uh, and I'm not saying they did it because she introduced it. I'm just connecting the dots for you. <clears throat> and so they thought to, to walk the left-hand path and to embrace the left-hand path was to become a full-on Satanist who believed in supernatural entities and dark entities that had a independent real existence. And so it was sort of the <clears throat> religious form, uh, the opposite of Christianity, but there was genuine faith. And like I said, some really dark and nefarious things that were done. But let's explain and explore what the left-hand path really is. And, and I think that for today, I think for the age in which we live today, that the left-hand path can be re redeemed, it can be recovered, it can be cleansed from some of the elements of it that makes it um, destructive or that makes it unattractive to people, and we can redeem it and celebrate it in a way that's healthy for us and healthy for our community. So the word left in the Latin <clears throat> is where we get the word sinister. So the word sinister uh, means left-handed. And so it's, some of you may have gone to Catholic school. Some of you may be old enough to have gone to Catholic school, or maybe you had parents that went to Catholic school, where if you wrote with the left hand, they would tie your hand and force you to write with your right hand. That's because this idea that is woven into language that the left hand is sinister, that the left hand is evil. But essentially the differences are, um, pretty simple to see, and none of it has to do with anything evil or dark or nefarious. So let's look at the left-hand path first by understanding the right-hand path. What is the right-hand path? So the right-hand path is the path of Christianity. It's the path of most forms of mysticism. It's the path of a lot of new age and spiritual teachings. 
that says that what we're seeking to do is to bring ourselves into union, into conformity with the laws of the universe, into harmony with the laws of the universe, into harmony with God, if we believe in that, into harmony with the community and the group. And it really is about a loss of self. It is about a loss of self to conform. And this could be understood by looking at the sun. So if you understand that ancient people took their theology, took their mythology, took their spiritual ideas from the stars and from astrology, <clears throat> then we can understand this, I think, a little bit better. Uh, Bill Donahue has a YouTube channel on here where he talks a lot about the astro theology that is in the Bible. And so the right-hand path would relate to the day. It would relate to the sun and it would relate to light. And so we see a lot of language about being light workers, right? Not just uh, walking in the light and shunning the darkness like we see in Christianity, the new heavens and the new earth. There is no more night there. Uh, so clearly it is a sun-based religion. A lot of the language that we use in new age circles, metaphysical circles, when we talk about being light workers, we talk about raising our vibration, we talk about losing the ego, we maybe have some mysticism in there about union with God and following these ascended masters who are light beings and all of that stuff. It's also based strictly on the sun. And so the idea was that there was an ascension that would take place. Now, these are ancient ideas, but you can see how they're formed and fitted for today. So the idea of ascension is, is that you're ascending into the sun. And when you get into the sun, you burn up. In Kabbalah, when you go past the <clears throat> first seven sephiroth, if you know what that's about, and you cross what's called the abyss, and you go into the higher planes and higher realms, the reason it's called the abyss is because to get to the top three rungs of Jacob's ladder, there has to be a complete disillusion and dissolving and loss of the self, the self being burnt up in the sun. And so there's a lot of uh, authoritarianism that comes out of this. You have to follow the leader, you have to follow the group, you have to follow the teaching, you have to follow the path. And a lot of the work in that, excuse me, a lot of the work in that is to lose your self in order, like I said, to become one with God or to have harmony with God. Now, this for me begs a question. If we were all at one time part of the universal mind, if we were all at one time part of God, if we are an aspect of God's own consciousness that was divided and put into a realm of contrast and polarity so that we could have knowledge of light and darkness, so we could have knowledge of um good and evil, so that we have knowledge, so that God could discover God's self, well, then why the pathway to return? Why didn't we just remain in that place of harmony and union? So the left-hand path teaches us something a little bit different and gives us a different approach. And this would be the pathway of night. This would be the pathway of darkness. Now, this does not mean, please do not equate darkness with evil. If you understand, even just looking at the world, that we live in a world, a physical world, at least here on earth, that's balanced between light and darkness, perfectly balanced between light and darkness, perfectly even. We have uh, the spring equinox, the fall equinox. We have the winter solstice. We have the summer solstice. We have the shortest day of the year when darkness reigns. We have the longest day of the year when light reigns. We have... Uh, equal amounts, in other words, of light and darkness throughout our year. But also keep in mind that night is not filled with darkness. There are lights in the night sky. There is the moon and there is the stars. And this is the difference. This is the significant difference. In the path of the light or of the daytime or of the right-hand path, we have one star. We have one source of light that gives us light that we are then to join into. We are to ascend and burn up and join into. Nighttime, <laughs> there are millions of suns. There are millions of stars. There is the moon, there's these things. So when I'm talking about night or darkness, I'm not talking about anything that has to do with anything that's evil. I'm talking about individuated lights or stars, each shining 
and expressing themselves. And this correlates to the left-hand path. So if we were to look at it, two types of ascension, and remember ascension is a metaphor, but if we were to look at two types of ascension, you have the daytime ascension, which seeks to unify with the one, the law of one, Ra, right? The, the, the sun god, the star, the, the sun. Nighttime or left-hand path, there are many stars, there are many lights. And so the foundational teaching of the left-hand path is that you have light within you. This isn't about exploring, just exploring darkness and finding darkness and seeing how contrarian and how rebellious and how evil you can be, which is kind of how Madame Blavatsky portrayed it. But it's realizing that there is darkness and darkness is not evil. And that through the exploration of our darkness, we can find our light. And by finding our light, we let our light shine. Notice that each star or each planet has its own course, its own fixed place, and it remains in that fixed place, shining its light. So the spiritual path of the left-hand path, then, is a path of the liberation of your own light. It is the liberation of your own authentic self. It's the liberation of it, the exaltation of it, and the full expression of it. So it's the exact opposite of denying yourself and taking up your cross. It's the exact opposite of losing your ego and losing yourself. But it's to realize that we are all aspects of the divine or of the universal mind or just of the universe, if you want to say it that way. I believe we're all aspects of the Logos. We're all aspects of the universal mind or what some people call God, although I think God is a problematic word. So that means you have divine light, though, inside of you. That means that you have a unique expression of your own consciousness, that you are a star, that you are a light. And so the pathway, the spiritual pathway of the left-hand path is oftentimes seen as evil. It's oftentimes seen as uh, demonic or something that is a threat to the community because in the case of following the left-hand path, we wake up and realize I've been hypnotized by the group. I've literally been put to sleep and just been surrendering my own will, my own preferences, my own desires, my own expression, my own uniqueness, my own gifting, my own talent in order to conform to the community, in this case, religious communities or dogmatic religious doctrines that then teach us a path of um, putting ourselves last, strictly service to others, and ultimately a loss of self so that we can have union with the sun, with, with the one God. The left-hand path, on the other hand, says when you wake up to that, you, you wake and realize I've been asleep, I've been hypnotized by these things, and I've lost parts and aspects of myself by conforming to doctrines and teachings and spiritual practices that didn't really fit me, that didn't really serve me, that I was really struggling with. So there are a lot of people who try to baptize themselves, <laughs> immerse themselves into this kind of a conformity, into this kind of loss of self, but there's a war going on inside of them. And so they're constantly on this pathway of trying to fix that. They're trying to fix that war. They're trying to silence those other voices on the inside that are resisting and pushing back. The left-hand path gives place and honor to the I will. It gives place and honor to the authentic self. It gives place and honor to the energies within the self that are trying to be given up for conformity or destroyed. And so oftentimes they will do things that are completely contrary to the group or completely contrary to the path. And that will appear evil to the people who are still pursuing the path on the right, a la Madame Blavatsky, right? And then it can become exaggerated. And then people take that and run with that. And so Jesus is actually a good example of this, because if you look at the life of Jesus, and I'll do a little bit more on this in a future video if you'd like, but if you look at the, at the life of Jesus, Jesus was uh, crucified as a rebel on a cross. He was seen as an enemy of the state. He was seen as an enemy of Caesar. He was even seen as an enemy of Judaism. He was accused of being possessed of the power of Beelzebul, uh, the prince of demons. He was accused of blasphemy. He was going against the teachings and uh, breaking the law. So he was seen as a lawbreaker. He was seen as demonic. He was seen as demon-possessed. And yet, and yet, he was the expression later 
that would become part of Christianity, the full expression of the divine, right? So we kind of took what Jesus was doing, which was really a model in many cases of a left-hand path life that says, discover your own divine self, discover your own light, let your light shine. Don't let your light be hidden under a basket or under a bushel. And it was shifted by the church into this sort of right-hand path way of being. So I hope this was helpful for you. If you have questions, please put it in the comments. Again, if you want to join the New Day Global Group, it's a private group on Facebook. You can find that in my bio. Uh, I'd love to have you join us for that. I hope this makes sense. Uh, if you have questions, I'll answer those in future videos. Thank you for taking time to watch the whole video. And I hope that you have a wonderful day, night, evening, whatever it is for you, and that you are blessed and that you're prosperous and that you are happy. Thank you.